today we're looking into this real world data pipeline and this petabyte scale architecture that processes a lot of data. You can learn a lot from this about how to stream data through ingest processing and then storage on a large scale. So have fun. Hi, I'm Don with AWS. And I'm David with Vercara, and this is my architecture. Oh, what do we see? S3, SNS, two queues here. Auto scale transformer, warehouse, Athena to look at the data. Another queue. Is it two? Okay, okay, okay. Edge network. So David, what, what I, I think I'm looking at is a very scalable architecture for basically transforming, aggregating, and providing uh, a query mechanism mm -hmm. based on edge network data. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through that, the architecture from the edge? Sure, sure. Awesome. Uh, at Vercara, our edge network for DNS resolvers spans the entire globe. Uh, mm -hmm. Throughout the day, we receive a, roughly 530 billion unique transactions. Wow, that's an impressive number. That's a large number. Through that, that <laughs> generates a lot of exhaust data that we need to take internally to process so we can report on it, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Uh, so at the every single edge location, they generate multiple files per minute um, containing that data in a proprietary compressed format okay. to send us that information. Uh, throughout the day, it's upwards of 400,000 unique uh, files that we receive okay. wow. uh, in upwards of 20 terabytes of compressed data per day mm -hmm. that we need to ingest um, into our warehouse. Well, how many records would you say per second that you process? Uh, it comes out to be roughly 6.6 .6 million records per second. Uh, we have lows of around 2 million, upwards to 10 million per second. Okay. By the way, if you want to get into data engineering, then this week is your chance because only this week we are doing a 20% discount here with the code ROADMAPS2025 because we completely redesigned everything and we now have roadmaps for beginners, for data analysts, for data scientists, for software developers and also a Kafka boot and Spark Bootcamp. This for beginners we also have a lot of content if you're already a professional and if you're already a data engineer, so check it out, learndataengineering.com. Only this week, 20% off. Wow. All right. I'm excited now. Yep. <laughs> so that is basically, as I understand it, DNS uh, resolving. Basically, when you make a call on the, or when you try to access a, a site on the internet, the DNS service is going to then basically give you the IP address for this. And so, um, they're handling all of this. That is that is that is a large. That, that's why this large amount of data is coming through or coming together here, right? A lot of requests, uh, a lot of terabytes of data. Uh, as they upload each file, uh, it goes to an ingest bucket into S3, uh, where we have notifications set up, uh, which traverse uh, through SNS and then over to SQS for our transformers uh, to receive the those files. Mm -hmm. uh, what the I wonder why they why they use these two here. Right? Why do they use SNS here and why do they use SQS? I wonder why. I wonder why why, the, why did they chain this together? Maybe this is just for that you have multiple queues behind an SNS topic. That's something like does this, does no, somebody know this? Let me see something. Does a message from AWS SNS disappear after consuming? See, oh no, not the, just use the number. So with SNS it doesn't. If SNS is publishing to an SQS, Q. That is exactly what we have here, right? This is publishing here. The message will remain in the SQS here. 
until it's explicitly deleted by a consumer. Of course, you have a transformer and you want that that transformer will take the data here or will then, no, the other way around, the transformer will then take the data from here, will transform it and then will tell the transformer here, okay or not okay. So delete the message or not. If the consumer reads the message but does not delete it, it will become available again after the visibility timeout expires. SQS um, provides at least once. Yeah. Process the message. SNS does not retain messages. Yeah. Of, yeah, that's it. Exactly. So once this is delivered from SNS from the from the ingest into this transformer queue here, it gets deleted here from SNS because then it's already in the process. And then depending on if it works, if that transformer works, it will be deleted from SQS. Or if that transformer doesn't work, it will not be deleted and it will be offered again afterwards. That is a very, very uh, important um, process here. So keep this in mind because this is going to most likely right here, right? Um, or it's going to right here. We're going to see where this is going. But that is that is very, very important to keep this, this process here in mind. ChatGPT for the help here for the win. Transformers so do is they take the single compressed file uh, from our edge and converts it into something that we can actually directly query and interact with. So as the transformers pick up files uh, or the notifications from SQS, they grab the files from our ingest bucket, process through the, the file. Mm -hmm. um, yep. It enhances the data, extracts uh, the information and outputs a parquet file, Okay. Uh, which then it then uploads uh, into our first official S3 warehouse uh, bucket location. I have to imagine okay, so, uh, like you I said, start with S3. You, maybe you started with a database. Correct. And then also just like, what, did, did you find that you were, you had so much uh, data that you were trying to process that you, you know, you basically reached the limits. Correct. Uh, in the past, uh, we've used Redshift, uh, we've used uh, Postgres compliant databases uh, to store this information. Uh, and as the company has grown over time, obviously the amount of DNS traffic has increased. Mm -hmm. uh, so previously we've kind of outgrown a lot of the solutions. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, the more our usage of the data has increased as well, uh, more reporting, more mm. analytics, of course. things of that nature. Okay. So why don't we look at the aggregation here? I'm, I'm curious about what you're having to aggregate and why. So the information that comes in from the edge is at microsecond level precision, okay. uh, being over 530 billion uh, records per day. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an awful oh. lot of data to scan and attempt to make queries off of. What we wow. end up doing is we can take that data from microsecond and we go into uh, various other levels, like minute, They're going to aggregate hour, it, yeah. day. As minute, the file day. Uh, enters uh, our warehouse into the raw, we send another notification over to SNS. Okay. It's picked up here uh, and then our aggregators interact with the ingestion of that raw data going into the warehouse itself. So it'll web out uh, its various operations into the different tables uh, that we serve up uh, with glue for our, our warehouse infrastructure. Got it. So David, I have to imagine. Serve with glue for data warehouse infrastructure. <sighs> Let's quickly go back here. They're taking them, they're processing the data here with, with Lambda. Mm. So now okay. it's benefits to consumers uh, on the far right over there, as well as some operational benefits. You mm. want to talk about those? Correct. Um, so internally we have consumers uh, with reports, but we also mm -hmm. have an API available to our, our customers. Okay. Uh, throughout the day we have thousands upon thousands of queries uh, against our data. With our consumers using Athena, which then hit uh, the warehouse itself, mm -hmm. the, the power of isolation between the queries execution where they no longer impact each other is a major benefit that we had. Okay. Uh, previous solutions that we've used, uh, one wrong query uh, that hits a, a database, would impact 100% of our users. Yeah, of course. Uh, this completely eliminates Terrible. that. And that's the when other you use added benefit and so to this warehouse solution 
is the the time to which the data becomes available. Okay. Uh, with our transformer and the first minute operations that we have, it takes roughly four to five minutes from data on the wire at okay. the edge uh, to appear uh, in the warehouse in a queryable fashion. Got it. And what about cost? I mean, it looks like, uh, especially using S3, has to be some cost benefits. Oh, absolutely. Uh, with the data that we receive, every table that we have is a different S3 location mm -hmm. stored behind the scenes. So with using S3 lifecycle rules, uh, we're able to kind of fine tune the exact amount of data for each table type that we have. Um, so some of the higher level ag aggregations like Minute, uh, which are very large in size, we can cut that off early yeah. and save money. Interesting. Uh, this is very impressive. The numbers, the, the sheer amount of uh, records per second that you mentioned earlier, uh, and as well as the simplicity of what you've created is very impressive. So thank you very much, David, for sharing that with oh, us. Thank you. Yeah, I think it would be very interesting to see more like what they are doing, what, what else they are doing here. And where is the, like, okay, we now know we have we have the individual, the aggregator here. We have the transformers here. That's easy to. We have our Athena where the customers can actually then look at the data and analyze the data. The aggregator is basically aggregating the data from the raw data to minutes, hours, or days of data to make it easy to watch from here. Like, I think. There is something missing. He he mentioned glue here at some point that we didn't that we don't see here. So something here is is missing. I don't know exactly what. 